Hey, I'm going to show you how I make circuit boards in this video. So I've got a little project going here. And uh, pretty much, uh, yeah, it's done. But I'll go through it a little bit and I'll take you step by step of how it's all done. So the program I'm using here is called Express PCB. It's free online. For you, Gord, I'll throw it on the disc. But uh, yeah, it's uh, quite easy to use. Express PCB is really easy to use. All you pretty much have to do is uh, I'll just move off the side here and uh, kind of show you a few things. So uh, off in the corner of here, you can uh, click for your components, and then on the top bar, you can pretty much go find anything you need here. They don't have everything, but you can pretty much make your own parts if you have to. But, uh, yeah, like, they got a bunch of, like, chips and stuff like that. There's different pins. They got, uh, all kinds of stuff if you really want to. And the nice thing about it is it's all to scale, so if you want to print out from this program, uh, it'll all print out to scale on the paper. You don't have to worry about your holes not matching or lining up. Uh, this is all service mount stuff. So I'm going to be doing that on this board. And as you can see, it comes with yellow. The yellow is uh, pretty much a silk screen. Uh, and it's not going to be copper. All the red will be copper. And uh, if you switch to a bottom layer here, you do that by looking at the... Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, here. If you just look at the bottom layer. Come on. There we go. Okay, so everything green there is going through the bottom layer. So real quickly, if uh, if up in the corner here, you select the bottom layer, and then you select your 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 line tool, you pretty much are drawing everything that will be on the bottom layer. But unless you start doing that stuff, um, we're just gonna I'm gonna stick with talking about. A single layer PCB board. So for that, uh, I'm going to turn my my uh, my top layer back on, and all my layers are on right now. Uh, I'll just put throw a note in here. If you take off a, a layer, so you only see here the silk screen and uh, the bottom layer, and the top here where you're actually working with your layers, you will not be able to select your top your top uh, copper layer. You'll only be able to select silk screen layer and your bottom layer. So, just a little tip for you. So I'll put that back on and I'm just going to work up here with the top layer. So pretty much to use it, let's say I'll just do a simple one here with a uh, battery maybe. And I don't think there are any batteries in this list but there is a um, connector for a socket for like a, a wall wart or a transformer or whatever and if I can find it here <laughs> connectors as you can see there's a lot of stuff and here we go it's called a jack for wall wall transformer so I'll just you know what I'll just get rid of all this first and then I'll go on with this all right. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so got my my wall wart, my wall jack, jack for wall transformer jack there, <laughs> and I will let's say connect a uh, LED to it. So just gotta. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm in the wrong list here. Uh. I want to make sure I'm in the connectors list. That's this that button right there, and uh, this here is for like pads and stuff like that. So we'll go with the, go over that a little bit here. But let's go back to our all our components and stuff. And LEDs are somewhere. Hmm. There we go. Okay. So I'll throw an LED down here. I'll even zoom in a little bit, kind of hard to see. So there we go. 
dot LED and we'll go back to the components list pull down the menu and um, let's just put a button in here it's not an on off switch but uh, just a just a push button so this circuit pretty much you'll push the button and the light will come on as soon as you let go the light will turn back off and maybe we'll throw a resistor in there as well so I going to just go look for resistors there we go resistors and there's different wattages tells you the wattage what the resistor would be and it actually says what the lead spacing is so we're only dealing with one LED so I'll just go a little one here I can't tell you what the the resistance is for that for an LED but depending on what your voltage is and everything I'm sure you get the idea so now go select your uh, base tool and uh, start connecting everything so we'll put your trace this here is going to be positive and just doing this real quickly here and then connect your LED to your resistor your resistor to your come on your buttons now what I will tell you here is if you make sure you click in the middle of where uh, these the circles on your components are it will connect them so now if I ever need to move something it, the lines will come along with it so that is extremely handy but uh, if you just go over like this and you don't actually click on the inside your uh, lines will not follow so what you can do though after is you can drag click and drag the little dots there and you can actually snap them back in to where they belong and as you can see your lines will follow your components so just a little tip comes in handy you can also use uh, your mouse your mouse your pointer tool here and uh, you can select a bunch of items by clicking and dragging and you can yeah move them all together so that comes handy as well alright so let's finish this project up here and we'll connect it to here that's our negative and there we go so that's pretty much how to use this program I'll just show you some other things here when you're uh, when you're in your trace tool that's this guy over here you'll be able to select how thick you want your traces I like to keep it at 20 and I think that's default but yeah you can make really thick traces if you want or you can pretty much go right down to nothing but I wouldn't recommend that because uh, when you do it, when you print it out and do all your uh, making of the board there, it will probably eat right through it and your lines will disappear. So, there we go. That's a little tutorial on how to use this. A couple other things maybe. Um, this, this corner tool, I guess. Yeah. You can, uh, after you've made a trace, you can uh, use it to put a, uh, basically a corner in and now you'll be able to move it around like this here and I'll just do another one here and there's other tool here this will disconnect Whoop. You can see there and yeah it will basically chop that off and all you have to do to make traces is you will click Remember, got to be connect. Uh, have the uh, you want to select your trace tool there, but all you do is you will click once, and you go to wherever you want. You you're not holding the mouse down right now, and then you click again. And if you make a mistake, 
let's say you're like, oh, I didn't want to do that. You hit backspace to go back. You can go backspace again. Just keep on going backspace. And if you're really not happy, or if you've gone backspace all the way, as you can see, you can't go any farther than that. If you hit escape, it will just remove it. Or, uh, and also once you're done your trace, you hit enter, and it will finish it for you at your last point. So, that's pretty much that. To delete a trace, you can click on it and press delete. So that's pretty much the basics of how to use Express PCB. And now, I think we'll go on to our next to our uh, the project I've been working on there. So I'm just going to select all this here, and I'm just going to delete it. Oop, goodbye. Alright, so, so what I do anyway, I, I work on my project, I made it, so now it's it's been made in this program here, and, uh, yeah, like I say, I can't, I can't find out how to flip it in this program, and, uh, so this is what I basically do anyway. So, because I want all my circuitry to be showing, all my traces and everything to be showing on the copper, the same, uh, same, uh, like, I want it to be all showing with the components and all that. So, this is how I designed it, and this is how it's going to look once it's on the, the uh, PCB board, and all the components will just go right on top of there like that. So, what I do is I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to flip it. So all I pretty much do is I take a screenshot, uh, in this case because I wanted to make sure it's clear, uh, I took a few screenshots, really zoomed in, and uh, not quite that zoomed in, but more so like this, and so I took a screenshot like that, and I took another screenshot like this, and I use a program called Photoshop so I'll just show you what I did there so here's half a screenshot I did and then here's the other and all I did was pretty much I lined them up and uh, made sure that you know all the traces are are perfectly aligned here so I'm not going to go too much into paint shop. You can use whatever you want. I'm sure there's a there's a way you can do it. But if I print it out just like that, it's all going to be covered in toner, and that's not what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all this black. And let's see here. Find my bucket tool. I'm just going to go off a little bit gray here because these, these little white dots are actually more of a gray color. And thunk, there you go. And what I do is I just leave all these little circles uh, filled in because I'm just going to drill through the copper anyway. And uh, even that there for the uh, wall transformer, I'll leave this filled in. Beautiful. Look at that. Now, all. All I want to do, you, if you only have a black and white printer, you can just print it all like this. But I would highly recommend that you uh, you make all your lines black because if you don't, uh, your black and white printer might print out a shade of gray. So keep doing that until they're all done. Hey. Right. So once you're done that, I'm actually going to add a little extra. Okay, so as you can see, it's all done there. So now that it's all done, let's uh, start making this thing. So first thing to do is I'm going to have to print it out, but before I actually want to print it on, onto my paper that I'll be using on the circuit board, I just want to make sure it's printing out to scale. So I'm going to do a test print onto some regular paper. Now, 
just in case you're having some trouble with having it print square or uh, to the size you need uh, on here uh, this yellow square that you can move around here is pretty much your key to your problem so now if you move your mouse up to this corner here and you look down in the corner right you can see my Y axis and my, my X axis are both set at zero if I move my mouse around you can see it moves so what you want to do is go down to the opposite corner so my board is going to be 5.1 inches by 4 inches so that's what I want to make sure I print out so what I do is on here I'm going to actually crop this to roughly what is in the in the uh, in the program there so there it's nice and cropped so what I want to do is important thing like I say because we're going to be printing it and everything's going to be mirrored if we don't mirror it here first we're going to want to flip this now that it's all done so what we do for that depending on the program you're using if you're using Photoshop you just control T and then you right click and then you go flip horizontally Ta -da. so now it's upside down so now let's print this double click on it just to deselect it we'll put print print now remember we want it to be to scale and obviously our example is showing it's not to scale okay so what you want to do is in scale print size your height everything's in inches now remember we were looking at the bottom corner there to find out what it is so it's 5.1 by 4 so your height is 5.1 oh actually no sorry 4 is your height and this is 5.1 but it will automatically put it so it's pretty close and now I don't want it to have it centered I actually want to have it up here because my printer's got a bad spot down this side so now I'll print now that our sizes should be the way they are print now you can't just use any printer, you need a toner printer. Uh, if your printer uses ink, it won't work. But uh, we're just testing here, so it doesn't really matter. Well, now we wait until this thing warms up, I guess. Finally, it took forever. So, here we are. So, uh, make sure it's to scale what I do is I just look at it nice and closely there and I like to make sure that all the chases are separate everything looks pretty good now just to make sure all our parts are going to fit on there nicely. I want to take a look here. Look at that. I know the light's not perfect here, but I'll try to get a, a better shot like this. Okay, all our parts are going to be perfect on there. Look at that. Beautiful. And then we got some LEDs somewhere. Now these are surface mount LEDs, so beautiful. I'm pretty happy. Pretty happy with that. What other components are we gonna be throwing on here? It's always good to check. So this will be going underneath. 
but uh, yeah it's looking pretty good actually that might be going over whatever it doesn't matter and this is our switch and our switch is a little off but whatever we're gonna make do it well we got it's supposed to be service I'm gonna be service mounting this switch anyway so I'm gonna be basically bending these uh, prongs over uh, in order to have it sit right on top without drilling holes but let's print it out onto the real stuff now so this is just regular paper now the paper I use is this yellow kind of color if I can get it out here but if you can take a look this side's uh, basically flat and this side's a really glossy and uh, you can't just use gloss paper I've never tried it but uh, I believe this stuff is actually will this gloss is actually going to uh, dissolve in water and that's basically what allows a toner to uh, stick to other things and you be able to get this off so make sure you use the right paper or else it will not work so let's print it out onto this stuff make sure you got it the right side for this printer I gotta keep the glossy side in or up good uh, good thing to do when you're printing out your uh, example here is just maybe mark um, one side of the page so when it goes through you know what side is going to be printed on so when you put this in you're printing on the uh, shiny side so let's print it okay oh uh, I had to do a somewhat better job so as you can see for the switch here I really did a sloppy job, but at least the contacts will probably be better. It's just going to bother me if I don't. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to prepare the circuit board, my PCB board here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to cut it to the size I'm going to need. So here's what I want it. I would, I like to do. Uh, I just take my, my uh, test printout, and I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife. And I'm going to cut around it. Yeah, so there we go. And now, this should fit almost perfectly on here. Just about like that. Okay. Right. So now I'm going to take my piece of scrap here and I'm just going to put it on the edge of my paper. And I'm going to score down it while holding tightly down so it doesn't slip because that's the last thing I want to do. And I'll do a bunch of creases like this. Keep cutting through it. Now that I've cut, I can put a little more pressure as I keep working. I want to be careful though. You might lose a finger. Hey. <laughs> so now what I do is I'll find my edge here and I will just go around it like this so that I know where it is basically. Ta-da! And do the other side too. All right, now that I did that, I can put it upside down here. And I know it's gonna be hard to see on the camera, but I'm just gonna line it up with those two, two edges. Ah. Hold it down tight. There we go.
All right. And now, see that looks pretty good. Both sides. You don't have to cut all the way through. All you have to do now is if you put it on the edge. Like so. You can snap her off. And what I'm going to do is put this guy here. I'm going to put some weight on it. Ta da! You got a pretty good edge. Yeah, a little rough, but if you have a Dremel or some sandpaper, you can clean that right off. Okay, so I just cleaned it off with the Dremel there. Now what you're going to want to do, now that you have it to the size you want here, is you're going to want to uh, clean it up. So, I'm sure you know, use some uh, steel wool. Just clean it up a bit. You want to make sure it's clean or else your toner won't stick on here properly. Of course, keep working around it here. I'm getting fingerprints all over it, so I'm just going to take my sample here and kind of hold it down with that. Pretty good. See, nice and shiny. And we'll see the camera in there. So, now that that's done, time to iron our uh, our printed out the circuit on there. So here it is. It's all nice, nicely printed out there. And uh, I just inspected it a little bit there. Uh, again, just because I want to make sure nothing is connecting too much. You always want to check because if you got something going over or something, you know, it would be more of a pain. So I'm going to do the same here as I did with my template, or as with my sample there. I'm just going to cut all the way around it. Now, if you prefer, you can leave the edges and you can try to fold them over and uh, basically tape it down but uh, using your iron the tape depending on what kind of tape you're using it can get kind of stinky and make a mess up your iron so I'm trying not to uh, put this stuff or uh, this piece of cut off PCB onto the onto the toner itself because I don't want to uh, wreck it just by putting weight on it hey perfect so now that that's all done here Time to iron onto our board. So, face down. This is why we want it to be a reverse, because once it comes off, you can see, sort of, it will be the right way. But until then, it's going to be all mirrored. Okay, I'm just going to get the iron ready. Okay, now that our iron is all warmed up, I want to be very careful to uh, align everything so the the uh, circuit isn't going to be off of off of the uh, board. This is why I cut it right to the edge pretty much so it's easier to tell. But you can see it through the uh, through the paper, so that helps. But uh, like I say, you can always use. Uh, tape to help hold it down hey. so now that I got it there 
I want to be very careful to not move it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way from one corner inward. I'm going to pull pull it out so it doesn't slide in. You just want to take your time, be careful. See there I'm already getting a little nervous. But now that I got a corner down, see it's already connected. It's going to be easier as I go here. Just keep on working it. It's very hot. I'm just gonna. This iron's really hot right now, so I shouldn't have to. But you really want to. Uh, you want to make sure you try to get it all, because sometimes the edges you won't. You'll miss, and that'll be a pain later. So I even just angle the iron a bit. Work. I use the edge here, kind of tilt the iron at an angle, and. Okay. I think that's pretty good. So now what I want to do is I want to take it with me over to the sink. And it's hot, so use some pliers or something. I'm going to use my Hey, and all you want to do is pour it under some hot water. I would say hot water. Hot water is the best. So just keep soaking it. Like the better soaked it is, the easier it's gonna come off. All right. So let's try it out here. Just take a corner and slowly start peeling it off. Now you see, there's some spots there. The toner is still. Uh, lifting so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go iron it I'm just gonna iron that corner All right, so I iron that just that side there I'm gonna wet it up again I'm not gonna work on that side this time I'm gonna start on this other side here Take patience. It's not quite what I'm hoping here. Alright, we're gonna have to try from this side, I guess. Just slowly peel it off. Don't rush, don't rip it off like a band-aid. Coming off pretty good so far. Better be recording. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. So, there we have it. 
we got a board that's pretty much ready to go through the bath. Now, when I was taking it off there, we have left uh, a few pieces missing. So, the you know, once we put in the acid bath, that's going to disappear. Our current's not going to flow through the trace that, you know, where we want it to go. But there's an easy way to fix that, luckily. Uh, permanent markers. They uh, work just as good as toner. In fact, if you wanted to, you could pretty much do this all with a permanent marker, but uh, it'd be a lot harder anyway. So, that's all I'm going to do here is try to... Uh, Trace, uh, you know, where those wires are supposed to be. Be better if I had a fine point marker, but I didn't find any of the store. So We'll have to do. Along with that, and all all the other places, like on here, you can kind of fix up some of these spots. Yeah, just do a real good inspection. And that's another thing I would do is I would just check all your uh, your uh, all the spots where you're gonna have wires and stuff connecting anywhere it's close make sure that nothing like here you see that's all connecting there so what it's a lot easier to fix that now than it is after you go through the bath so here all I'm gonna do is take an exacto knife just ever so carefully scrape the lines this way the acid will have a better better chance of getting there. See now that should be okay. Even here. Cause these are all these contacts are really close together. Perfect, so now that we got all that taken care of, now it's time for the acid bath. So, you might have heard of like agitators and stuff like that, but, yep, don't really need that if you're not, you know, in a big rush. So this is the stuff I'm using here, feral chloride, and uh, you can get this at active or Tip top, any electronic store, really. And I will fill up my bowl here, just enough. So I can put my uh, board in there. Should be good. So, now we take our board, our board gourd, take our board. We put her in, and what we're going to do is we're going to actually face, face it uh, face down this way. Uh, there's currents underneath, and uh, anything that erodes isn't going to just stay on the top. They're preventing uh, any more corrosion from happening. So yeah, this just goes in here like this. Make sure there's no uh, air bubbles. Underneath here, this stuff is corrosive, so try not to, if you get it on your hands, go wash your hands right away. And, uh, yeah. Just keep an eye on it. Don't, uh, don't let it go too long. I would say maybe a half hour. But, uh, yeah, just, like I say, keep watching it. That's the last thing you want to do is it for it to grow through the toner and then you're corroding through all your traces. So we'll let that go. I'm going to check it every, you know, 10 minutes or so, every now and then. 
And, uh, yeah. We should have a nice board when we're done. Take a look here and see how we're doing. It's been over 30, maybe even over 40 minutes. Kind of lost track here, but, ooh, look at that. Oh, you can see it's, uh, there's still some spots left. But, uh, overall, it's, uh, doing pretty good. So, I'll leave it in there for some, for a little longer, and, as so you can see, the toner's still on there. That's how it's supposed to end up. Leave it in there for another, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Should be good. Well, take a look here, see how it's doing. Oh, look. I think it's done. Yep. It's beautiful. Okay. I'm just going to go rinse this out. I think you know how to do that. Okay, so I washed it off there. Now, the end result. Ta da! Take a look at that. So now, you just want to inspect it all again and make sure that. Uh, like see there's a little bit there that's going to be shorting out and stuff so I'm going to take care of that but see like that's where we were scraping before with the uh, razor knife with the exacto knife and uh, if we didn't get rid of that toner before that would have been all connected in there so with your steel wool you don't have to really worry about it coming, peeling off or anything, but you were going to want to uh, basically go at her until you see copper, so. Look at that, beautiful. So now what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna expect, inspect your whole entire board for any uh, spots that are shorting out. All right, now it's time to start putting all the components together. So, one of the first things we're going to be doing is, first thing you're going to want to do is uh, drill some holes. So here I got a uh, a one millimeter drill bit, and I also got uh, some smaller drill bits. But for this board, I won't need them. But these are, I think, point. Yeah, I think these are point four millimeter drill bits or something. But, uh, yeah, I won't be using these. So I put the drill bit into the drill. Basically, so it's only sticking out a little bit. Or else they tend to always break. But, uh, yeah. I prefer to hold it in my hand while I'm doing it. Just don't uh, drill a hole through yourself. <laughs> and, uh... Start drilling away. Okay, so I'm done drilling all my holes here. So just to uh, clean that up in the back up a little bit. 
I'm just going to take my steel wool and uh, clean it up a bit. And same with the front. So now we're ready to start placing our components, our surface mount components. And uh, this is actually probably the easiest part we will have to get to do some surface mount stuff is you're going to have to get some solder paste. And uh, I got this stuff here at Tip Top and uh, it basically comes in a syringe, basically a mixture of solder and flux. So all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to start applying it to all the pads I want to put my components. I'm not left handed here. <laughs> Let's see here if I can keep myself out of the way. Usually I just do it straight down here. It'll kind of come out on its own, at its own rate, kind of. So only now and then you have to push on the the the. The plunger on in the syringe. So there we go. I repair up this little tiny needle noses. Got my LEDs, and the other thing I like is a uh, a little container or something to put your LEDs in so that you don't lose them and they go flying off your desk or something. Yeah, that should be good. And now I gotta place them. Now the way I've designed this is all the positive one leads are uh, on the outside and all the negative are in the inside. And with these little LEDs, so if I can uh, even show you. So with these LEDs, they're uh, actually, um, if I can stop shaking it here, but if, and I get it at the right angle, but see there's a corner on the, looks like it's hard to see on the camera, but, but yeah, you see on the right hand side of the screen, top right hand corner, there's like a little chunk missing, and uh, that is negative, so I want to make sure that I place them all right, but uh, As you can tell, they're very tiny, and it's easier just to put them in the little tray, the little container you have, and pick them up. So there's uh, all the LEDs. <laughs> now I'm just gonna place the other things, like the little socket 
for the uh, 14 pin connector there she is now it's not actually a service mount so what I ended up doing was uh, I just flattened the uh, pins a bit uh, basically I bent them over so that I can service mount this sucker you can get service mount chips but if ever you want to get a pick programmer and or I'm sure you know if, then you can just uh, reprogram it so so I'll throw that down there they all are they're all sitting even the LEDs there you can see those so that's what the solder paste looks like up close there and uh, yeah we're ready to uh, put it in the reflow oven in my case I have a toaster oven So, hey, got all our components on. Let's give this another shot. So, just throw it in. Let's not leave it in there too long, though. As soon as it starts to melt, that's when it's time to get her out of there. Here we go. Hey. Yeah. So I'll show you here the uh, solder paste after it's all been uh, melted. So as you can see, that looks pretty darn good, and all the LEDs as well. Pretty happy with that. So now I got a few more little parts to put in. Like my switch and my adapter connector. And uh, I gotta put all my 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 wires in the back of the board. So all I'm gonna do is pull out some uh, Telephone cable wire out of a cable and ta da, look at that. So I'm gonna strip all that down and uh, throw it on the back here where they belong. And uh, yeah, after that, I guess we'll get a chance to plug it in.
The only reason I'm doing this like that is because the way I made it here. Once I put it into the board, I can probably just, hopefully, I can just heat it up. And uh, it will connect without me trying to squeeze my iron underneath of there kind of thing. Might have to try to solder it from the bottom. There we go. And finish off these other ones. Okay, and I got my switch as well. So that's pretty much all I do there is make a bunch of little wires there, leave some of the insulation on. And then, uh, yeah, I can stick them in the holes. Like that. Beautiful. Look at that. Okay, so check it out. We've got, uh, all the little wires in place. I guess uh, next step is I'll solder them all. So there we have it. It's all done. Finally. But uh did have some LEDs that weren't going. And there were a few spots that uh, were actually shorting out. So it's one thing to keep in mind if you're having trouble. You can see I've been scratching away at some spaces uh, in between the uh traces. <laughs> Cause uh they were actually very small spots that were shorting. Yeah, you can see like right in the middle of the screen there, there's a little piece of copper coming out. Sometimes that will stretch across. So you can't really do traces any uh, closer than that or any thinner. Beautiful. Look at that. Couldn't be happier about that. So now I'm just going to uh, do a couple more things. I might give it a little stand. I think I will. And I'm going to polish up the uh, the gourd a bit. 